everybody, welcome to the Law Doc Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be all of the resources for our American unit study. Now, I am actually combining three of our unit studies to make a very large American study. The three that I am combining together are traveling the states, traveling the parks, and our US government bundle. So those are the three kind of spines for everything that you're gonna see. I have a lot of books and a lot of games. So if that is your thing, stick around because you're not gonna wanna miss those. But the things that I am using in addition to the unit studies that are not books or games are discovery decks. I will specifically be using our president discovery deck um, the U.S. History Discovery Deck, and the Election Discovery Deck. We love them all. We will probably use more than just those three, but those are the three that we will be using specifically with our American study. And then another resource that I absolutely love are heritage letters. Um, we get the American heritage letters, which are like American landmarks. These happen to be the national parks that we're going to um, on our road trip. But then there are also the original heritage letters, which is a letter from a famous American through history. And it's written from their point of view as if they're writing it to you. So we will be using those. I pulled all of our heritage letters and put them right here so we can work our way through them and probably do a couple every few days or bunch of them when we do our mail times. I'm not really sure how yet, but I know that we will be using all of our heritage letters because we've been subscribers with her for three or four years now. So I have plenty to choose from. So for books, the first stack that I have are our national parks books. So these would be the ones that we would be using with traveling the parks. We have the Who Pooped in the Park book series. These books are hilarious. I have all of them. Um, I bought them used from thrift books. Uh, Emily has recently gotten into graphic novels. So I grabbed her this history comic of the national parks. On a recent, well recent, last year's cross country national park road trip, we picked up this subpar parks book. It's kind of hilarious. It's America's most extraordinary national parks and their least impressed visitors. So it's like a bad review of each park. So for example, um, Grand Canyon was hilarious. We read that one and we were like, really? Grand Canyon says, file this review under technically true, but a massive undersell. Uh, because basically they're saying it's just a bunch of dirt and rocks. It's really, really funny. So Emily loves reading this one. Of course, we have the actual um, America's National Park book that is required for traveling the parks. That is the required resource. We have National Parks, uh, A Kid's Guide to America's Parks, Monuments, and Landmarks. National Parks Maps. This one is just the illustrated map, but it's so pretty. And Emily always likes to take my phone and take a picture of the map before we go to the parks. So like she'll go through and take a picture of every park that we're going to because she finds these maps uh, more beautiful than typically what you would get on like the pamphlet. Explore America's National Parks. and then National Parks of the USA. This one is another one that's really, really pretty illustrations. The next stack of books that I have here are ones that we will be using more for the 50 states. So these are the books that we would use to go along with traveling the states. We have the Bashers History States and Capitals. Smart about the 50 states. Our 50 States Family Adventure. The United States of America, a state-by-state -state guide. The Ultimate U.S. Road Trip Atlas. Uh, this one is really funny because it's, it's not just really funny, but it's really informative because it's like a road trip for each state. So there's always four to five like stops or things that they recommend that you should do. Um, and then there's roadside attractions. So like whatever things you might wanna stop on the side of the road to see at that state, um, like a lunchbox museum or goats on the roof, 
for Georgia, just different things. So this is really, really fun, especially if you're actually planning a road trip because it gives you ideas of things you may want to do in that state um, and roadside attractions you may want to stop at. United Tweets of America. This is a really simple picture book, but Emily loves how funny each of the state birds are. So she requested that we pull this one out. Explore America's Wildlife. Only in America, The Weird and Wonderful. This one is kind of similar to the road trip one. Um, it is like the weird things about that state. So it has your typical fast facts, but then it also has just kind of random weird things like Hawaiians love spam. They eat over 7 million cans a year, way more than any other state. So it's just all these little bite-sized factoids. 50 Adventures in the 50 States. Again, this one has all these little things that you can do in that state. Um, these are a little more nature-based, I would say, where the other books are a little more like roadside attraction, kind of funny-based. I like them. I like all of them for different reasons because you get a lot of different ideas for things you could do in that state. And then, of course, we have the 50 states, which is the required resource for traveling the states. And this one has a little bit of everything, which is why I love it so much. It um, gives you information about the state, key facts, moments to remember from history, important historical people that were from that state or that lived in that state or made a difference in that state. The next stack of books that I have are books that we are using specifically with kind of our election U.S. government um, bundle unit study. So we have, what's the big deal about the elections? For which we stand. A kid's guide to the US presidents. This is one that Emily's really excited about because she loves US presidents, but it is just kind of a simple, like picture, key facts, and a little bit about their presidency. If I ran for president, if I were president, we the kids, a more perfect union, and so you want to be president. I thought I would throw in just a few kind of American history to round this unit out. So I have major events in American history, 50 memorable um, defining moments from pre-colonial times to the 21st century. They are just kind of short two to three page informative reads. And then each one of them has some sort of like little explore more section. So in the case of slavery introduced in the colonies, to explore more, it says the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C has plenty of resources, videos, and artifacts that you can experience in person or on their website. So it's a really kind of like great jumping off point. Um, 100 True Tales from American History, The American Story. And this is a little more in depth with their True Tales. It's two or three pages, but since the book is so much bigger, it's like more information, if that makes sense. And then I have the Children's Encyclopedia of American History. I thought we would probably reference quite a bit in this one. I have a stack of books that I pulled for Emily that she can do for independent reads. I don't require independent reading or require what she reads. I just like to give her a good kind of assortment of things that she might or might not want to read. So I have the Campground Kids series. These are all about mysteries and the national parks. Um, I think there's 10 in the series. I specifically pulled the four that are the parks that we're going to, but if she really enjoys the series, obviously I'll give her the other six. Uh, I also grabbed our Capital Mysteries. We've had these forever. She's kind of outgrown them, but I'm fine with it. I don't really necessarily care about grade level when it comes to books. We have the first 14 of these. 
I bought them in a set from Scholastics. Um, I just thought they would be kind of fun because we have like who cloned the president and kidnap at the Capitol and skeleton in the Smithsonian, um, a spy in the White House, who broke Lincoln's thumb. Anyway, so I pulled that book set for her. If she reads them, great. If she doesn't, that's fine with me too. I will say if she doesn't read them this time around, it's probably time for us to pass them on. Uh, and then I grabbed just a few others that we had that would work with this study. So we have Pedro's journal, the matchlock gun, Sarah, plain and tall, and the kid who ran for president. Now, there is a second one in the series, um, The Kid Who Became President. I didn't buy that one yet. If she reads this one and loves it, I will grab that one for her, too. And then for read-alouds for us, um, I have a few different things. The first, I guess, six that I have are the Who and What Was books that are the required resource for our U.S. government bundle. So we have What is the Declaration of Independence? What is the Constitution? What is a presidential election? Where is the White House? What is the Supreme Court? And what is Congress? Now, obviously, at the level that those are, she could read these independently. I like to read these aloud because they're the ones that our unit study is based on. Um, but I did also pull quite a few other who, what, and where was books that would tie in with America, like where is Mount Rushmore, because we're specifically going there, um, who is George Washington, who was Abraham Lincoln, who was Thomas Jefferson, who was Theodore Roosevelt, obviously the faces on Mount Rushmore. Uh, and we have, I think, almost every who, what, where was book. So if there's any others that she would like to read, I'm happy to pull those for her too. And then some kind of American, um, America fiction type of read alouds that I pulled. We probably won't get to all of these, but the ones that interested her and I both the most were The Witch of Blackbird Pond, Caddy Woodlawn, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, Miracles on Maple Hill, Johnny Tremaine, and Carry On, Mr. Bodewitch. The last few books that I have are with the intention of hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, closing our American study out with a kind of large America tea time. So with that in mind, I picked up the Poetry for Young People American Poetry. I don't think they make this one anymore. Um, I had to buy it on thrift books. My America, a poetry atlas. So this kind of splits each section of the United States up into regions. And then it has poems that relate to that region. And then the last one, which is one of our personal favorites, is the National Geography, sorry, National Geographic, the poetry of the U.S. We have all of their poetry books. We absolutely love them because you cannot beat the gorgeous pictures. This one is more than 200 poems that celebrate the people, places, and passions of the United States. Okay, now for the games. There is a lot. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going to start off with just like the two games that really don't fit into a category. They're just fun, kind of American-ish themed. And the first one is Spot It America. Uh, this is like a mini version. I think it was meant to be their 4th of July, or we've always used it for 4th of July. But it's just kind of American themed images. It is also the mini, like so the smaller version. But we love Spot It. So if we can fit a themed version into a study, we're absolutely doing it. The other one is Rolling America. Again, this is esque because I'll just show you on the back. You have kind of like these cards where it symbolizes the states and you're rolling dice. Um, it's a roll and write game. I wouldn't say that you're like learning about America, but maybe, maybe we could go there. National Parks next. The first one that I have is the National Parks Professor Noggin. We love these decks. 
I'm not sure that this one is in print anymore. I think I had to buy it used off of eBay. But every one of the Professor Noggins has easy and hard questions. We always start our study off with the easy with the goal of trying to reach the hard by the time we finished. Um, you just roll the dice and answer the question. It's super simple. They're great for in the car or during dinner time. We have the National Park Top Trump. These are another favorite that we buy pretty much in every theme, especially if it goes with a unit study. I also have the Trivial Pursuit National Park um, Take Along one, as well as the National Park Trivia Pursuit board game. We have the National Parks Get Wild. This is a frenzied game of wildlife wrangling. Um, this one is really fun because you're trying to get the wildlife that you need in your park. So like, for example, if you have Yellowstone, you obviously need to try to collect bison. Um, if you have like one of the, like maybe Biscayne Bay, you need to get the sea turtle. So this one is really fun. Emily loves it because she loves anything that has to do with animals. So being able to have that wildlife tie in with the national parks has been really great. And then one of our favorites is trekking the national parks, the board game. You guys, these games are absolutely beautiful and such great quality. The next set of games that I have are for the 50 states or kind of the geography um, of the United States. This is the largest category. It's the one that I have the most for. We have the Professor Noggins United States Geography. So this is kind of more of like the actual physical geography. So like the erosion and the Grand Canyon and the minerals versus like the states themselves. And just like all the geography or all the professor noggins, they have that easy and that hard questions. So it works great for multiple levels. We also have the guess in 10, 50 states. This is another one that we really enjoy playing at dinner time. I just like to kind of set the box on the table and we just each take turns drawing one and trying to guess it while we're eating dinner. We have Top Trent's The United States, which is the 50 states. We have the USA card game. Now they have a board game version of this too. And I went back and forth because the price difference um, it definitely validated having the board, but I decided to get the card version because of our road trip. And this was one that was small enough for us to take with us. I was trying to get some that were maybe a little bit smaller to travel, but if you would rather have like the board game version, they have that as well. USA flag frenzy. The 50 States Trivia Game. States of the USA, the All-American Trivia Game. Sequence, States and Capitals. Scout It Out. And um, this is the ultimate guessing board game with math, facts, and fun. Sorry, maps, facts, and fun. Uh, explore the 50 states, a game of who, where, and what. If you can't tell, we really love trivia games. The great states, test your knowledge of state landmarks, locations, and capitals. Eagle chase. Oh, and then this is one of Emily's favorites game of the States. Can you sell the most from coast to coast? But I'm going to be honest with you. Her favorite part of this whole game, while it is a great game is the fact that your pieces are these little trucks and you are collecting and selling these little blocks that go in your truck. So even from the time that she was, I don't know. It says eight plus. We've probably at least been playing it since she was six. She thought this was the coolest game ever because she got this little truck and she got to put these little blocks. She called them presents in it. Um, 
So that's her personal favorite. And then my favorite and the one that we probably play the most is the Scrambled States of America. The reason that is, you don't have to go in to this game knowing anything ahead of time because some of your questions will literally be like, a nickname, the nickname for this state has a plant or animal in it. And the card that you have in your hand has the nickname. And so if the nickname is, in this case, let's see, um, Prairie State, you would have it. Or let's see, another thing says, is orange. And so you just look at your card and see, is your state orange? Like you don't have to have prior knowledge. They also give you these, each of you, these little maps. So if it says is north of, is south of, you can just look. Like you don't have to know the information. So that means that we've been able to play this one since Emily was very young. Um, I mean, sometimes I would have to read the thing to her, but she didn't have to go in knowing any information, which I really liked. Because a lot of trivia games, obviously you need to know before you can play them. And this wasn't one of them. Uh, then we also have 10 Days in the USA. We have not played this one, but I'm so excited to play it because we had some of the original 10 Days in games years ago, and then they just republished this one. I'm hoping it's as good as the originals. And then I think the last one for the 50 states is the 50 states bingo. The last game category that I have is kind of like history and presidents slash election. So I have the Professor Noggin American Revolution. I have the Professor Noggin Civil War. And then I have the Professor Noggin Presidents. I also have this American Trivia. Now these trivia questions include like geography, history, pop culture, just general, so it's a little bit of everything. Um, it does say 14 plus. That's probably pretty close. I would say at least 12 because just some of the questions, like the pop, even Emily's like, huh? Because she has no clue. She's not old enough to know. So you do need at least, I would say, 12 to 13 for that one. Uh, guess in 10 U.S. history. I think this is a Walmart exclusive. I have not found it anywhere else. As of right now, I got lucky and found it in the store. So um, that may be where you have to go to find this one. That was loud, sorry. Way back when, The Making of America. So this is an American history game. Um, we have had this for years. I bought it on Rainbow Resources. I don't know that you can find it anymore, but if you find it, you need to snatch it up. Like, it's a great game. We have the Top Trump's U.S. Presidents. And then the last one that I have is election night. This is a math game. I love it. Um, it plays with two teams or sometimes in our case, two players. And I love that it plays well with two players. This year I also bought, they're in the bottom of this box. I hit them. So I would remember where they were later. The expansion pack. So they just released an expansion pack, which has questions, um, or question cards for citizenship and for state capitals. So it says, learn about US civics and history using questions based on the United States citizenship test um, or sharpen your state capital knowledge with these 50 question cards. I think you can buy each of those individually or you can buy them bundled. I know that it was cheaper to buy them bundled or maybe I just wanted both of them and bought them bundled. Um, and then for me personally, the tray, if you already have it for your election night will lift up and these fit under that tray so that you can keep it all in the same box. If you don't have this game, go ahead and buy the expansion pack when you buy it because you're gonna love the game. Uh, we literally like it and we don't just play it during election years. It is a math game and one of the selling features when I purchased it was that one side of the board is based off of addition and the other side of the board is based off of multiplication. So the really cool thing is that you could play, let's say you have, you know, kind of an age gap in your kids, you could play with your younger kids on the addition side and then you could play with your older kids on the multiplication side. 
um, and get even more play out of it. Well, there you have it. Those are all of the amazing American resources that we have for our upcoming unit study. If I missed an American resource that you absolutely love, please tell me down in the comments so that I can add it to my expansive collection.